All right, First Thessalonians in chapter 2, let's begin with a word of prayer. Lord, we come to you because you are our creator, you are our redeemer, you are the author of the Bible. And so we ask you to send your Holy Spirit to work in our hearts today, that not only will we trust your word, we would see it as you have made it inspired and preserved, but that it would be the authority for our lives. That as we've just sung, you would be our vision, what we look to, what fills our eyes. And that that would happen through your word as you reach into our lives and hearts through its power, as you change us by it to be more like Jesus Christ. Would help us to see how your word has authority because it comes from you. Help us to believe it and to live like it. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. First Thessalonians in chapter 2, looking at the authority of the Bible, or that God's Word is authoritative. You know, just because the Bible is inspired, and just because it's preserved, and just because it is truthful in everything that is inerrant, some would ask the question, maybe it's a good question to ask, do we have to listen to it? I lived under the authority of an older sister at times. She was not always authoritative, but sometimes she was. The Bible, though, is always authoritative, and it is authoritative for our lives. It's not just authoritative in the facts in the facts uh, of salvation, the facts of creation, the facts uh, of how the church should be administered, the qualifications for an elder, but for the practical aspects of our lives. <clears throat> Scripture, the Bible, is authoritative. And just as a reminder, we, we've looked in previous weeks on how the Bible is God-breathed. This isn't just some man-made-up book. God produced it. God worked through men to have His Word put to page. And because God has done this, He has promised and does preserve His Word. It remains with us. It is Forever, even as we read in our scripturing uh, this afternoon from Psalm 119, forever, O Lord. And the Bible is, as we saw last week, true. It's true in every aspect. And though there are, there are truths outside of the Bible in our world, not all of them are pure and righteous and good but the Bible is. So this week, we want to consider how the Bible is authoritative. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13 says, and we thank God constantly for this. Paul writing to the Thessalonians saying, we are just overflowing all the time thanking God that this particular thing has happened. What is it he's thankful for? Well, that when you, the speaking of the Thessalonians, you received the word of God, which you heard from us, right? Paul was the conduit. You accepted it not as the word of men, but as what it really is, as it is the word of God, which is at work in you, believers. Not just our word, but God's. I almost feel like I'm channeling a little bit of reading rainbow, but don't take my word for it, right? Look it up in the book. 
here. Paul writes and says, I'm so thankful, even my companions with me were so thankful all the time that when you received the word of God, you received it not as coming from men, just another philosophy of this world to pay attention to and maybe grasp for a little time and then put off when you find a better one, but as what it is, the word of God. The authority of the Bible, that the word of God, the Bible is authoritative, begins in Genesis chapter 1. Begins in Genesis chapter 1 because its authority is derived from who made it. Or we could say it this way, the Bible is authoritative because God is the supreme authority. As we move into election season and vote wisely, vote according to what the Bible says our leaders should be, know that even when the person maybe we don't want is placed into a position we don't want them to be in, that God has placed them there and pray for them that they would recognize that their authority in its limits comes from God alone. Because God is the supreme authority. And how do we know this? Well, one of the ways we know God is the supreme authority is in Genesis 1.1. Simple, isn't it? In the beginning, God created. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. How do you see that as authority, you may ask? If you make a thing... Is it yours? Now, granted, if you're not, as long as you're not making it for someone else who's paid you to make it, or paid you to work to make it, right? If you make a thing, it is yours. You can decide to throw it away. You can decide to burn it. You can decide to give it away. You can decide to sell it. The thing is yours. You hold authority over it. God created everything. There is nothing that, was made, that is made that was not created by God. Thus, he is the ultimate authority. Another passage where we see this authority of God is in Romans 13.1, where it states plainly that God is the authority. In fact, this deals with government. Be subject to the governments because they're subject to God, whether they admit it or not. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God. And those that exist have been instituted by God. The Bible is authoritative because it comes from God, and God is the ultimate authority. John chapter 1, speaking about the incarnation of Jesus Christ, that Jesus being God, taking on flesh, describes for us that Jesus is both God and the Word, being, that is, the communication of God even directly to us, even as Colossians describes. He is the exact imprint. He is God, come in flesh. If you want to know God, look at Jesus. John 1, 1 through 3 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was was God. And we could even add there that it's continuing. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So what Jesus speaks, as we have recorded in our Bibles, it's authoritative because he is God. And again, don't take my word for it. Ask Jesus yourself. Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. The Father has bestowed upon the Son his rightful authority. Even though the Son was submissive to the Father and came and made himself of no reputation as born in the, as a servant and died for us, having died, he received honor and glory. 
and authority. Even the Son is authority of the Bible, and its authority begins and ends in the authority of the only divine, God eternal, almighty creator and judge. It's not our words, it's not our interpretation that is important. It's the word of God. And it has authority because it comes from the ultimate authority. One can think of it like this, going back to the illustration of my older sister. If she had authority in as much as she was reflecting mom, and when she erred from mom, she lost her authority. Where God has breathed out the Bible, it is always authoritative. The Bible is authoritative because God is authoritative. The Bible is authoritative because it is God's word. First Thessalonians 2 that we began with. You didn't receive it just as our word, just as what we have brought to you. But what? What it really is. It's true nature. The word of God. It's not just human desire or here, this is human morality or the best way for society to conform so that it, it will operate the best. These are the words of God. You accepted it not as the word of men, but as what it really is, the word of God. In writing to Timothy, Paul also says it this way. When we looked at with the inspiration of Scripture, Hey, Timothy, but as for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, with the Bible, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Why? Because all Scripture is what? Breathed out by God. It's not just Paul's teaching to Timothy. It's the Word of God. It's God communicating to us. And because it is breathed out by God, profitable for teaching, for proof, for correction, for training in righteousness, the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. The Bible is authoritative because it is from God. It is his word. It is much like my sister coming, thus saith mom. Ah. And if that's true, you better listen because the wrath of mom. Here it is, the exact word of God, thus saith the Lord. And it's true. We better listen, lest we suffer the wrath of God. Third here, the Bible is authoritative for eternal life. John chapter 1, verses 12 through 13, help us with this idea. That the word of God has a purpose. Its authority is meant to do something for us. It's meant to bring us to a place John writing and even quoting at several points the John the Baptist is describing Jesus come in the flesh. And here it says in John chapter 1, verses 12 and 13 that, but to all who did receive him, that is Jesus, who is described in this first chapter as both the word and and the light. To those who, re who received him, who believed in his name, not just saw some mystical, oh, I believe that Jesus was real, but in his character, who he is. The name stood for the person. To those who believed in his name, who trusted Jesus, he, Jesus, the word and the light, 
gave them the right to become children of God. They have the authority now as children of God to be them, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. No other means... As much as we may desire something or try with all our fleshly might to make it happen, only those who believe in Jesus have the authoritative right to be children of God. God's word as authoritative is authoritative for eternal life. Many will come and, and tell you and say that we, we can get to God any various number of ways. And they forget the words of Jesus. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes unto the Father but through me. The Bible is authoritative for eternal life. You want eternal life? You want life beyond death, life beyond pain, life beyond suffering. It's found in the Word of God. Jesus says what? I am the way, the truth, and the life. You want life? The Bible tells us about Jesus throughout the Old Testament. We we expect him. We look forward to him. We see the need. We see the sin throughout society, throughout the world. We see God's judgment. We see the problem. We see the lambs by the millions slain. And still, it's not enough. Till we get to the New Testament, here comes the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John chapter 6, we've looked at this before. Verses 68 and 69. Where do we go? Who else has the answers? Who else tells us directly? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to him shall we go. You have the words of eternal life. We have believed and come to know that you are the Holy One of God. The Bible is authoritative and it's authoritative for eternal life. You want eternal life? The answers are here. And you can take it as authoritative because its author is God. It's interesting how the rich young man comes up What must I do to have eternal life? He's got the Old Testament. Has he really missed it that far? Oh, he's been keeping it, at least externally. But his heart's not been in it. He's missed the authority of God. He's missed the authority of the Word of God. And he's looking for answers anywhere else. Here are the answers. Here, you want life? The Bible is authoritative for eternal life. Only through the Bible can we know Jesus. Only through the Bible can we have eternal life. Lastly, the Bible is authoritative for all aspects of our lives. Some people will go and say, okay, it's great. I can read it and find out about Jesus and finally go to heaven. I can get my fire insurance, as it were. And that's as far as they go. Oh, I don't need to pay attention anymore to it. I just got my salvation. That's all I need. To that one, I would say you probably are not. There's no fruit. Be afraid. Because the Bible is useful and is authoritative for every aspect of our lives. For our eternal salvation, certainly. 
before our day-to-day -day lives as well. Peter, writing his second letter, opens this way, 2 Peter chapter 1. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained a faith of equal standing with ours by the righteousness of God and Savior, Jesus Christ. May grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, who his divine power, and you can debate who is the one who has the divine power, and the answer is yes, the Father and the Son here, okay? His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence, by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises, so that through them you may be partakers of the divine nature that is being like Jesus, not being able to create worlds, okay? Having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. Did you notice that middle part, verse 3? What has God given us? All things. Or, or put it this way in your mind, everything we need for life and to be godly in it. And that life could, could go one of two ways or really both ways in that it could be eternal life or even just how to live life. I favor the both. And godliness. Because there are definitely... Uh, good general wisdom principles within the Bible for general life, but it also definitely speaks to us about how to have eternal life. And one can live even a good and even a moral life and even a wise, somewhat wise life and not be godly. So God has given us through Jesus everything we need for life and godliness. And how? Through the knowledge of him who has called us to his own glory and excellence. And what is the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence? The 66 books of the Bible. Where else do we meet Jesus? He has ascended on high. He no longer walks the earth. And it's to our benefit if you read what he teaches us about the Holy Spirit's coming. So how are you to meet Jesus but through the pages of his word? And through that, he has given us everything we need for life and godliness. Psalm 119, verse 105, describes it this way. Your word is a lamp to my feet, and a light to my path. Which way should I go? The word tells us. It may not say, thus saith the Lord, thou shalt marry X, or thou shalt take job Y. But it gives us the principles to live by. It shows us the character of God and how we best honor and glorify him in all we do, whether we eat or we drink or whatever we do, to do it all to the glory of God. This verse reminds me of some experiences I have learning to drive without headlights. It is a necessary skill in military service, especially for convoys, when you don't want to have lights on so that no one shoots at you. And it's a very difficult thing because the challenge is seeing far enough without running into anyone else. 
And all you wish for while you're doing it, even though you might have, even if you're really blessed, if your unit has money, have night vision goggles on, maybe even be able to see a little bit in front of you without vomiting because night vision can do that to you. As you wish you had headlights on. You wish you had lights just to see the path before you, to miss the occasional bump or all the ruts. To have enough light to see the vehicle in front of you so you don't run into the back of it. And so the person behind you doesn't run into you. And many of us are running through this world without the headlights on. We go... And we live our lives as if God's word doesn't apply. Wondering why aren't the lights on? And he's given it to us. It's a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. In a dark, dark night with no moon and stars, with cloud cover, it's so much more preferable to have a light to see the rock in front of you. To see where the path turns so you don't end up in a river. And yet, sometimes we approach the Bible as, yes, authoritative to give me salvation, but what about this situation in my life? How do I deal with a spouse? How do I handle this friendship? How do I respond to mocking God? But it's all here. God has given it to us. Everything we need for life and godliness because the Bible is authoritative for every aspect of our lives. The Bible, Scripture, because of its authority and by its authority, it is eminently practical and applicable. Because it proceeds from God, our creator, the Bible is authoritative for all aspects of our lives. It tells us in no uncertain terms how to gain eternal life. It tells us who and who we should not marry. It speaks to relationships, to worship, even life in a sinful world. And many of us are running around without the headlights on. The Bible is authoritative that should really cause us to question some things about ourselves and ask, is the Bible my ultimate authority? Or do I go and search through all the self-help books and everything else to find answers before I turn to the pages of God's Word? He made me, but does he really know how to run my life? Is the Bible your ultimate authority? Or are you looking to something else, even as good as it may be? Other men's opinions, other sources. Or is the Bible your authority? Do you take it as we've sung even today that God has spoken? Is the Bible your ultimate authority practically in your life? How should I respond? How should I say this? What should I do? How should I worship God through the week? Is it your practical authority? Do you use it? Or do you just go, oh, it's great for salvation, and here, let me just put it on the shelf. Or is God your vision? And you see it through the pages of his word. Is the Bible your ultimate authority practically in your life? Are you using it? Most importantly, is it your authority for salvation? Or do you look at other people's opinions 
other people's systems and apply them to the Bible instead of the Bible to them? Is it your authority for salvation? That it says Jesus came and died. Even as Paul summarizes us for, for us in 1 Corinthians 15, he died according to the scriptures. Why? Because we're sinners. He was buried and rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. Even Jesus lived and died according to the authority of the word of God. And we want to add to it. We want to take someone else's opinion, someone else's system as the answer and bend and shape the Bible into it. Versus taking what it says plainly as a whole together in context that Jesus died for us, redeemed us, because we were dead in our trespass and sins. Is the Bible your authority for salvation? Or are you trusting and leaning on something else? It really goes back to, is it your authority? Would you die on this hill? They came and said, you can give up your Bible or you can die. What would you do? The Bible is authoritative for our lives, for every aspect of it, for our salvation, because it comes from God. Let's pray. Father, help us to live even this week in light of your word, obeying it, loving it, looking to it for the answers, for the direction of our lives. Lord, that we would let it pierce us where we have sinned and are wrong and to cut away the parts that do not look like Jesus Christ. That we would let it mold us and shape us. Yeah. That we would take it at what it says about our salvation or that we would take it what it says for our daily lives so that we would be more like Jesus. God, we rest upon your word. We rest that it is authoritative because you are our creator. There is no higher authority and such authority you have bestowed upon the Son and his submissive relationship to you. And one day we will be judged by it. So Lord, we ask, help us to live by it. We ask in Jesus' name, amen.